In the previous lesson, we talked about creating and modifying geometry in the sculpt environment. And in this quick tutorial, we will focus on ways that we can convert geometry into the sculpt workspace to use as the basis for creating designs in the sculpt environment. In this example, we will create a custom fitting earbud leveraging both solid geometry and mesh geometry in the sculpt workspace. To begin, I've imported an STL file into Fusion 360. The result is the mesh representation of a human ear that I want to design around. Fusion 360 has the ability to import, edit, refine, and repair mesh geometry in the mesh workspace. You'll find the mesh workspace when you're not capturing design history or when you've imported geometry. To begin creating our earbud, we will go into the Sculpt workspace and start off with an existing shape. This might be an existing design, a placeholder piece of geometry like a primitive, or a starting point that we want to reference. What I want to focus on in this workflow is using the Convert tool in the Sculpt workspace with the Pull tool. The Convert tool in Fusion 360 allows me to convert surfaces, solids, or mesh geometry into T-spline entities. You'll find the Convert tool in the Utilities pull-down. I will set my selection to B-Rep Face, which is the selection type for solids or surfaces. Then I will define how many subdivisional faces I want for my geometry. You can see the result is a T-spline body converted from the original earpiece that I can now begin to sculpt with. Next, I want to use the Pull tool in the Modify menu. The Pull tool allows you to snap T-spline vertices to a face or surface. The Pull tool is a great solution if you need to match control points or vertices to complex surface geometry, or in an example like this where you're designing for customization around human factors. By selecting vertices in my T-spline body, the pull tool will move the vertices to the nearest body. On the inside of the ear, there's quite a bit of curvature change. And in this scenario, I might want to use Insert Edge to add another subdivision that I can pull to better match the inside of the ear. The resulting geometry is a T-spline that is a tight fit to the mesh geometry that I'm trying to design around. Next, I might want to further refine the body for aesthetic or manufacturing purposes. I will use Edit Form and the Scale Zero technique that we covered in an earlier lesson to flatten the inside edge of the earbud. Setting your pivot is an easy way to define the reference that you want to maintain when moving or scaling an Edit Form. On the outside edge, I'll use the Flatten tool and flatten the edge relative to the earbud geometry. If we reevaluate the geometry with the mesh turned on, we can see that the resulting T-spline shape is a tight fit around the mesh geometry that we imported. Continuing to use the Convert tool in the Sculpt workspace, I will convert another face from the plastic earbud housing, the result of which I want to bridge with the shape that I've already created. So thinking ahead, I know I want to maintain an even topology to bridge from. With that in mind, I'll subdivide the converted face with nine faces, remembering that I started with eight and subdivided once earlier in the workflow. After I remove and clean up some of the resulting geometry, I will use the bridge tool and bridge between the two bodies, giving me a nice result that will match the existing product housing.
Last, I'll repeat the same technique by converting the interior solid face, subdividing the geometry appropriately with the intention of bridging between the two resulting edges. Taking a look at the results so far, you can see in a short period of time I'm able to develop a form-fitting surface shell based primarily on mesh and solid geometry. Now it's time to finish this shape by thickening the geometry and bringing it back out of the sculpt workspace as a solid body. To do so, I'll use Thicken, which can be found under the Modify menu, and I will give this shell a uniform volume using this tool. Instead, I could have patched, stitched, and shelled the geometry all depending on the desired result. In this case, with a continuous closed form, I can use the Convert tool one last time, and this time, convert the T-spline entity into a solid body. Using the Convert tool, we'll run a geometry check for self-intersecting faces. When in the Sculpt workspace, self-intersecting faces are often difficult to see, especially in smooth mode. If you run into an issue where you cannot convert your form into a solid, switch into box mode, find the faces that are self-intersecting, edit, delete, and repair the offending faces. In this tutorial, we focus mostly on converting geometry into the sculpt workspace and using pull to match T-spline vertices to bodies in Fusion 360. The combination of this technique with the skills we've covered earlier offer a lot of flexibility to create, refine, and generate geometry in the sculpt workspace.